Welcome back to CBS Soap Dish Recap, where we recap everything CBS Soaps, both The Young and the Restless and The Bold and the Beautiful. This is your Young and the Restless Recap for August 8th, 2022. And yeah, we got two new bitter co-workers now working together, Phyllis and Diane and Phyllis's sabotage plan. And Chance digs deeper in his investigation of Ashlyn Locke. So take a second to make sure you're subscribed to this channel. And also, please don't forget to like and share. So without any other further ado, let's talk about this episode. So at the ranch, Nikki will think it seems like Victor is taking credit every time Ashlyn Locke name comes up. But Victor is insisting that he had nothing to do with his death. Now, the conversation does turn toward Adam as how, you know, it breaks Victor Hart to give up on his son being part of the family unity. However, Nikki will think that Victor needs to put that dream behind him for his own sanity. And I actually think it's insane for her to even say anything like that, especially since Adam is missing a whole bodily organ to help save his their own granddaughter. They got a lot of nerve to look down at Adam, and especially after he saved a couple of lives in that family. So let's head over to Newman Enterprises, the same place where Chance is heading, and he goes over to talk to Nick and Victoria. Now, what he has to talk about is the fact that he mentions that Ashlyn's car is being spotted at that gas station near Victoria's house. Now, after going through that whole recap of the issues with the security footage, Chance admits that he walked that half a mile to the gas station himself. Now, that walk left Chance having doubts that a week Hitting the head, Ashlyn Locke could have done the same thing, especially through thick woods and intense winds that happened that night. He even insists that he's on Nick and Victoria's side, but he is uh, he's suspecting that Victor, of course, had the body moved to protect them. Now, Victoria was like, and even Nick, they was like, we don't know anything, but you know, Chance was like, look, well, if you do remember anything, this is your chance to come clean with me because you'll be accessories after the fact. Victoria acts like everything Chance said is based on speculation. Nick is noting that he told Chance everything that he knew that night. So Chance will suggest that that's an interesting turn on his phrase that he, you know, made. And so at this point, they're digging a deeper hole, trying to protect their father, even though their father didn't think to protect them by doing what he did, even though Victor thought he did, which was crazy in itself. This whole thing is going to blow up in their faces, and I can't wait because at this point, you know, all of them, they just need to give it up. It was self-defense. They should have left it as it was. But Chance is getting ready to leave and head over to talk to uh, Victor. Now, once Chance left, Victoria started ranting at Nick for blowing up the plausible deniability that Victor offered. Nick is worrying that since Chance isn't going to leave this alone because he's a man of integrity, that means that all of them will be subject to major legal implications. And he's right. He is absolutely right. And Victoria just don't get it. She's just as crooked as her father, at least Nick have some form of a conscience in all of this. Let's just tell the truth and get it over with. But at the same time, they don't want to throw their dad under the bus, even though the bus was already put in place by them. I mean, it's just crazy. But, you know, hey, Victoria, she want to go down with that sinking ship letter. So now Chen shows up at the ranch. And while he's there having this conversation with Victor, he admits that he doesn't think Ashlyn walked out on his own. Chance feel absolutely certain that Victor knows more than he let him on. And he suggests that it's time to be straight with him because obviously Chance isn't stupid. He knows Victor had something to do with this. So over at Chancellor Park, we have both Tracy and Jack watching Harrison play soccer as they discuss none other than Diane Jenkins. 
Now, Jack will admit that he's happy that, you know, Diane has made a connection with Harrison. Now, as for whether Diane is a different person, now he did say the jury is still out on that. Though Jack seems hopeful about the situation. So, you know, I... She's obviously making strides with Jack, whether, you know, the other Abbots are not 100% there, especially Ashley, because she's all part of the whole sabotage pack. But, you know, Jack is hopeful. So now we're at society. Summer is pitching the idea of her mom, Phyllis, really overseeing Marchetti's new home division. Now, Kyle is wondering if Summer seriously thinks that this is a wise idea considering Phyllis and Diane has this feud going on. Summer now try to convince Kyle that maybe they can force their moms to be on their best behavior. Really, these are overgrown adults. Kyle would think that there has to be a condition to prevent Phyllis from becoming a liability. She's already a liability. Phyllis has to know that there, you know, if there's any problems, she's going to be out on her butt, out the door. Now, unless Phyllis and Diane can collaborate together, they need to stay away from each other. Summer also suggests to Kyle that he also need to be giving Diane that same warning so both of them will be put on notice and understand that there's a zero tolerance policy for instability. Now, one of the things that Kyle mentioned was match and gasoline. Why would you even want to even put that in the same room? Now, I get it. These kids are optimistic, but this is history. Over at the Grand Phoenix, Diane sashays in and gloats to Phyllis about her wonderful new life in Genoa City. Now, after Kyle texts her to meet, Diane plays up how she hates to leave Phyllis all alone. Now, Phyllis also hints that she got a really good feeling that something's about to change, something just spectacular. Now, one summer texts her with a preposition, proposition, I should say, Phyllis will mention, and then Diane kind of goes off on her own, but she knows that something is stirring in the waters in this situation. And this is just a catastrophe that's just waiting to happen. But at this point, Diane don't know. Now, Phyllis also meet up with Summer over at uh, the Grand Phoenix and of course, Phyllis is happy to find out that Summer offers her the opportunity to oversee the launch of Marchetti Home, which is their new home decor and furnishings line. Phyllis also learned that, guess what? You're going to have to obey the rules and play nice with Diane. Now, Phyllis ultimately assures Summer that she won't let her down. She did accept the offer. However, Phyllis seemed a little bit on edge about this situation, as she should, because, of course, Phyllis has an ulterior motive. Now, I just can't stand this part of it because of the fact that, you know, she's lying to her daughter. She knows that she really only wants this job just to get in and figure out a way to sabotage Diane. And she should be on edge. And you can tell that she is when she hugs Summer, you know, during their little celebration. Because it's bittersweet. Yes, she got a job, but at the same time, she can put her daughter's company at jeopardy. So now we're back at society. Diane is having a conversation with Kyle. Kyle lets her know that, you know, uh, Phyllis is coming over to oversee the launch of Marchetti Home. And yeah, she chokes on her drink when she finds that out. The news will leave Diane, of course, accusing Phyllis of sabotage, which she could see that a mile away. Why can't them? Anyway, she'll push Kyle to see that, you know, Phyllis have ulterior motives. Now, Kyle argues that even if that is the case, and she does have an agenda, she can only mess things up for Diane if she allows it to happen. It becomes clear to Diane that Kyle won't allow any fighting and that there will be consequences if she can't be civil. Diane is flipping out as she worries that this is some kind of a test, but Kyle suggests that she should make up her mind that she'll pass. 
I wouldn't want to undergo any of this. Now, honestly, she knows what this is. Why would you want to undo any of this? And I would be like, you know what? I appreciate it, but I can't work under these conditions. Now, as much as I want to be there to work with you, I'll still be in your life, but I wouldn't sign up for it. I would walk away from that, get a job as a realtor or something, which she used to, and call it a day, and then take that power away from them. That's just me. I mean, I, Kyle is stupid. Summer is stupid for allowing this to happen because this is all going to blow up. It's just enough drama as it is. So now back at the Grand Phoenix, Phyllis will give Nikki updates on the new job. Though she does warn that Summer will be watching her every move. Even so, though, Phyllis is still committed to the stupid plan of burying Diane and getting this bitch out of town. And I'm like, you only hurting yourself. Nikki don't care nothing about you. She's You are a means to an end. And because if this all blows up, she's going to crawl her way back over to Newman and don't care about the fact that you're going to blow up Marchetti and ruin you and your daughter's life. Anywho, so now Kyle reconvenes with Summer. They talk about how things went with their moms. Kyle confessed that Diane had a bad reaction, but he'll try to stay optimistic about the new arrangement. He even asked, are we making the biggest mistake of our lives? You absolutely are. You two immature kids going to take these two overgrown adult women with bad history and think they're going to just play nice and force them to work together. That's the dumbest idea ever. I just, anyway, but it makes for good soap opera drama, right? But they kiss and, you know, whatever. I just hope that, you know, it doesn't hurt them in the end. We're now finally at Crimson Lights. Diane blow past Jack because she's pissed off. Jack will pipe up so that Diane notices him. And so she'll admit that she didn't notice him there. But she also tells him that Phyllis is going to be her new co-worker. Diane goes on ranting about how this is a calculated plot. But Jack will urge her not to let her insecurities get in the way. After, you know, Diane kind of calms down and think about it for a moment, she does promise that she won't let that happen. So we all know that this whole Diane and Phyllis war is about to heat up anyway. So, you know, we got to stay tuned. I just, this is going to be real messy. I just hope that this blow up in Diane, Ash, I mean, in uh, Phyllis, Ashley, and Nikki's face. Because, I mean, if she is trying to make it right with them, let her do it. If she's going to do anything, let it be on her own accord and not drag all this other messiness in it and create chaos. But, hey, it's good TV. So, there you have it. Your Young and the Restless recap for Monday, August 8, 2022. I hope you enjoyed this recap. Also, stay tuned for the Bold and the Beautiful recap for August 8th as well on this channel. And just take a second to make sure you subscribe to this channel to receive all updates. And don't forget to like and share. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.